Hello everybody, I am back with another video. Thank you so much for the love on my first video. I was expecting to get maybe 20 views and I got almost 200, which is really crazy. So thank you so much to everybody for supporting that one. Since that one was so time intensive for me, for this one I wanted to make something that was a bit more laid back and simple. So I'm giving you a classic talking over a time lapse video and I did it for a six fan arts challenge that I completed last year. So feel free to grab your sketchbook or tablet and draw along with me and let's get right into the video. All right, hello everybody. This video is a recording of the six fan arts challenge that I did. I think it was last October or maybe no, it was last November. And this process was actually really long. When I first exported it from Procreate, it was 48 minutes long and that was the time-lapse version so you can tell I spent a ton of time on this and that'll be made even more clear when as you're watching right now all of these sketches that I'm doing will be completely deleted and started over and that is because I technically started on this I think in 2020 because I did a different six fan arts challenge and I had gotten so many suggestions for characters to do fan art of for the challenge that I was like I'll just do it again and I started on it in 2020 and just never got back around to it. Seems to be a running theme with <laughs> my work. So I kind of wanted to go through and talk about my process for each character because I ended up uh, using this six fan arts drawing as an opportunity to practice a bunch of different coloring and line art styles because I don't really have a consistent process. I feel like I might have a distinctive art style maybe, but in general I have always struggled with finishing a piece digitally. I feel like I can always get to a finishing point when I'm doing watercolor or colored pencil. It just feels like there's always a natural stopping point for traditional work, whereas with digital stuff, I could literally just go on forever. Hence why you're gonna see me erase and redraw all over the place in this video. Like, it's probably going to get annoying to watch. You're probably gonna be like, oh, that looked good. Why did you erase it? And I couldn't tell you. Honestly, the original drawings, they're all really nice, I think. And I ended up just getting rid of all of them because I was second guessing myself as I often do. And I'm sure that a lot of artists can relate to this. Sorry, I'm going on a bit of a tangent, but I just feel like when I was younger and especially when I was in school, including college, um, I felt a lot more confident about my work. I'm very grateful to have had a lot of support for my art growing up, a lot of external validation about what I was doing, and it made me feel good about my artwork. Even when I did get critiques, I still felt, you know, very strongly about my skill level. And if not my skill level, then I felt strongly about my potential. When I saw things that I had trouble doing, I was like, well, I'll be good at that one day. It just wasn't something that I was worried about ever. I never really felt insecure about my art and that's changed recently. I think it's a mixture of my taste outgrowing my skill level and my lack of habitual drawing since I got my degree. So when I say that my taste has outgrown my skill level, what I mean by that is I'm following a lot of professional artists and when I was younger I didn't really have any specific artists I looked up to, just media I liked. And now that I'm older and I understand the value of looking into professionals and referencing artists that you want to learn from, I'm able to see and pick out details that I want to incorporate into my own work. And it's great that I'm now super aware of that because I'm able to study it more effectively. I'm able to work towards putting those elements into my own work and creating my own unique artistic voice with it. And that's great. However, the downside of this is because I'm so much more aware of these things, it makes it that much more disappointing and hard when I draw something and it just doesn't come out the way that I see it in my mind or it just falls short of my own high expectations because I know exactly what I want and somehow because I don't have the skill level yet because I haven't practiced enough or whatever the reason may be, I'm just not there yet. And that's one of the reasons why I often second guess myself and convince myself that I need to redraw something a million times even if it looks just fine because I feel like if it's not as good as another artist that I'm comparing myself to then it's not good at all which isn't true and I know that so if you have the same mentality where you're constantly comparing yourself just know that it's okay 
to learn from others, and to actively keep trying to improve your work, but also remember to recognize the value that your own work has, and don't let your high expectations stop you from creating in general. And that is also a note to myself, because clearly, I need to take my own advice. The other reason that I don't feel as confident about my art now as I used to is that I simply don't draw as much as I used to. When I was younger, I would draw pretty much every single day, no problem, and I would bring my sketchbook with me everywhere we went, and because I was drawing so often, I was constantly seeing improvement in my work, I was constantly outdoing myself, and it felt fun, it felt motivating, I was seeing, oh my gosh, I get so much better every time I do this, and that motivated me to continue working on my art, and it also, at the time, was just a lot more fun to do. Um, since I graduated college, I started focusing on freelancing, and so artwork kind of became a source of work for me, and while there were times where I was trying to do it for fun, I said this in my introduction video, basically, doing art wasn't an escape anymore. It felt like work, it felt like something I had to do, and it was really hard to find the joy in doing art again, and I'm still struggling with that. I want to be the person that can draw every single day, but I don't know if that's sustainable or doable anymore. And so when I do sit down to draw, I tend to stay in my comfort zone. I'll draw basically the same things that I always do. I don't challenge myself. It's not like I think I'm bad. I just feel that I'm stuck and I'm not progressing forward the way I used to. And drawing every day isn't something that I think I can do anymore. And that's how we get to this video. With this six fan arts piece, I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to do it by basically just approaching the coloring and line art in a way that I don't normally do. So that way I could branch out and see if there were any processes that I liked that I could potentially bring into future work. Stuff like playing with the layer blend modes or coloring the line art in different ways or just shading and keeping in mind a more dramatic light source. I really like drawings with really cool lighting so that's something I know I definitely want to improve on. Right now you're seeing my actual final attempt at the Cat Noir fan art because as you've seen in the video already, I redrew him, I think, three or four times, which is ridiculous. I already went into why that's ridiculous. But yeah, I just wasn't happy with how he looked. I especially had issue with his eyes being under a mask, I guess. It was really hard for me to get the expression that I want. And I'm sad because I really liked the original pose that I drew him in, but I just wanted to start all over because I hated the way his face was turning out. So now you're seeing me kind of play with uh, layer blend modes and um, also textures on his outfit and I'm mostly happy with how it turned out. I think it could have been better, but you know, I always think it could be better. I still am glad that it turned out the way it did and that it looks better than the first drawing I had. I also like the textures that I ended up putting into his suit. I wish I made his hair less crazy and the ears look pretty off, but overall, I do think it turned out better than my first attempt. I still see a lot of room for improvement in this one, so that's why this is probably my second least favorite out of the six. It's funny how the first and last ones are my least favorites. And moving on, we have Connie from Steven Universe. I love Steven Universe so much. Maybe I'll make a video just talking about how much I love Steven Universe and why someday, but for now, you can just look at this cute little Connie fan art. The first drawing, once again, was really nice. I don't know why I felt the need to completely delete it. And this one's really nice too. And I think the attempt at coloring is much, much better. But still, you know, I didn't need to redraw it. But ultimately, I'm just happy with how the final version turned out on this one, honestly. I was definitely going for a more painterly approach with hers, like really getting into the folds of her shirt and the texture in her hair and adding a lot of interesting colors to her skin tone. That's something I really like playing with. I'd say out of all of them, this one's probably the closest to what I often do in my drawings. I feel like my style in general tends to be very line art heavy, but I also really like going in and doing a more painterly style of rendering. And those things kind of contrast with each other a bit. It's always been difficult for me to try to combine those two aesthetics because, you know, heavy line art tends to be associated with animation and comics. Whereas I feel like with a lot of artists who do a more painterly style, there isn't a lot of emphasis on the line work. So I really like artists who are able to combine and balance those two elements. People like Loish and Cosmic Spectrum and Reno Park. Those are some of my favorite artists who are able to capture that balance really well, all in their own style. And that's something that I really want to achieve in my own work. 
But overall, I like how it turned out. I played with a couple of the layer blend modes to make her pop more. But honestly, it looked nice before the layer blend modes too, so I think I might have just overworked it and overused them a little bit, but I don't hate it. Moving on, we have Aizawa from My Hero Academia. Let me know what you guys think about My Hero Academia. I kind of, um, I remember being really, really into it when it first started, and I still, you know, I keep up with the show, but um, I'm not as addicted to it as I used to. I used to think it was really amazing, and now I just kind of, I sit along for the ride. It's like a comfortable show that I can tune into, but I'm not desperate to find out what happens next or anything. With this drawing. Oh my gosh. Actually, I really love how it turned out. I was really happy with the very thin style of line art that I went for, which is something that I like to go for because it kind of mimics how I ink uh, traditionally because I usually use a, what are they called? A thin micron pen to do line art. And if I'm just drawing it, you know, I'll use a very thin mechanical pencil. So it was nice that I resisted the urge to draw everything with a thick <laughs> with a thick brush because I often do that because it tends to be faster. Honestly, it's digital. You want to look for shortcuts and so I tend to do that a lot even though I like the look of thinner line art a lot of the time. I'm also really pleased with how I colored him for this one. Um, I did a little bit of adjusting the color of the line art itself, but I also used a similar technique to what I was doing in the Cat Noir fan art where I was trying to add texture to his clothing, at least to the sweater he's wearing, and a little bit to the scarf as well. But I feel like for the most part I kept it kind of minimal, and I like how I kept the rendering fairly simple and pretty much just let the line work speak for itself mostly, while the color just kind of adds an extra pop to it. This one was definitely a big step for me so I'm really happy with how it turned out. Next up we have Toph. Um, this one I mostly just went for a very very basic coloring style like for her base colors but I wanted to add a really dramatic light source and kind of mimic how it might be in an animation or a comic book because there typically isn't super detailed rendering going on in those. Yeah I ended up doing this kind of fast. I was mostly just playing with the layer blend modes and adding in shapes. I like how it turned out. I think it turned out nicely. Um, I'm not sure if I enjoy the process of that one though. It was just too simple and while I should probably simplify my coloring process I don't think I'd want to do it this much. Next up we have Haku from Spirited Away. I really like how this one turned out as well. This one was a huge challenge for me. First of all you saw that I wanted to put the dragon behind him and I think that would have looked really cool but the space was so small and I was having trouble figuring out how to do it in a way that looked good so I just got rid of the dragon entirely. I'm sorry. But um, for the coloring it might be hard to explain this if you're not familiar with digital art but basically I tend to I basically almost always use a brush that has very high opacity and size pressure. By doing that I have a lot of control over how the brush strokes end up looking. But something that I know a lot of other digital artists do is they use these blocky brushes and they have a glaze effect. And uh, it's so hard to explain but basically it piles on the opacity the more that you um, put the brush over it. It's I'd say it's kind of similar to watercolor and how it functions, which you think that would appeal to me, but because it can be so weirdly unpredictable, I often just, I'm basically afraid of it. But for Haku, I decided I wanted to face my fears and just go for that style of painting, especially in his clothing. And I actually really like how it turned out. I ended up getting a lot of interesting shapes that I normally wouldn't get in my usual process. It was actually a lot of fun and I really like how it turned out. So maybe I should try doing that more often, but it's just so hard to resist having more control over what I'm doing. I am a perfectionist and so it's hard to lean into those happy accidents that happen with digital art a lot. You know, it's silly because I am very much into those happy accidents that you get when you're doing traditional art, so it's very weird. But yeah, I am really happy with how Haku turned out. He's definitely one of my favorites along with Aizawa. And last up we have Harley Quinn. Honestly, there's not much to say about this one. It's probably my least favorite of the six, sadly, even though it was the last one. I did get a lot of compliments comments on it though on Instagram when I posted it. So that was nice, but yeah, I just wasn't really feeling it this day. I remember when I was working on it, I was just kind of rushing and I wasn't feeling very well and I just wanted to get it over with and get it done. So I wasn't feeling the process too much. Watching the footage now, I think it does look nice. I just, you know, I wasn't in the game when I was working on it. I think the layer modes I added kind of actually take away from it, which is sad, but you know, it's not ugly. Sorry to end on kind of a mediocre note, at least for me, but at least I finished the entire six fan arts, finally. 
And there you have it, the full six fan arts challenge. Here's all the characters together. It's also the end of my very first talking over a time lapse video. So now I feel like a real art YouTuber. It's funny how my first video took a year to make, but this one only took two months, which means I'm getting faster, I guess. So hopefully next time I see you, it will be in an even shorter time frame. That's my goal. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to follow me on my socials. Check out the description below for details on my BLM art fundraiser and any other important links and I will see you in the next one. Bye!